your work surface. Uh, choose something that uh, isn't too high. Make sure that you protect it. I'm using an old front doormat and any materials you've got handy. Chipboard, plywood, even an old engineered floorboard. Anything you've got will be fine. You're gonna to have to do some marking out. So without steel rules, you'll just have to use ordinary rulers. If we have a mark to start off with, you might have a set square instead of a tri square. You can use that. Failing that, even if you make a mark, any piece of paper or sticker, in this case, Ginelli living the dream, will be a very good right angle. You can line that up, make a mark, and then finish it off with any sort of ruler. You're unlikely to have a tenon saw at home, but you might have a panel saw. Okay, they're faster, but be uh, very careful. Uh, a little more rough than the uh, smaller teeth of a tenon saw, but possibly even a hacksaw. Now, they're designed for metal work, but the smaller teeth will mean that it um, won't require so much sanding. The sawing will take longer, but that's probably no bad thing. So it'll be safe using our saws. We can use a foot instead of a uh, bench hook. And using the saw, instead of cutting in between two lines, uh, you want to cut as close as you can to the one line because you really don't want to be doing much um, sanding. So. Ten, uh, panel saws have bigger teeth than the tenon saws, so instead of resting your finger right at the front, like we can get away with with a tenon saw, you're better off resting your knuckle against the side of the saw to hold it in place while you get started. So a bit like that. So I'm going to put the saw ready right close to the line, get my knuckle in place so that my fingertip is away and then just drag backwards a couple of times. Okay, and once I have a groove, I can very carefully keep in that groove so I don't mess up the surface. Very light pressure. You'll see each stroke takes a lot of material away. So you have to try very hard to be straight. Okay, so that's the panel saw. Let's see how the hacksaw goes. See, the hacksaw gives a much cleaner line, so I'd be going for this if you have one. But for speed, I'll just uh, finish off, do a bit more with the panel saw. off with the hacksaw. Now just near the end you can reach over so that the piece doesn't fall off. Make sure you don't saw your fingers. see the difference here between the rougher area with the panel saw, the rougher area with the panel saw here, 
and smoother area with a hacksaw. See, it's trying to avoid that, but I pushed down a little too hard just on that last stroke with a uh, with the hacksaw. Get yourself some sandpaper. I've got 180 grit. You might have anything. Uh, the smaller numbers, are, the smaller numbers are a rougher grit. Uh, the bigger numbers are a finer grit. So this is instead of your disc sander, put it on a flat surface, and then give your piece. Just drag it across. Yeah, a smaller piece would be easier until you're done. Using thicker material like this uh, chipboard, you might want to uh, try a housing joint. I've got one line there. Take a scrap of the same material. I'm going to cover over the line, half cover over the line, to rule an extra one. And that gives me uh, the right width to saw down halfway through the material, and then I can chip out what's there using the hacksaw and I've made the grooves very close to the line. The two lines at a very shallow angle and then once I get right across uh, the top surface then I can level the saw down and uh, go to now right, made it right across the top surface. I can see this chipboard is 20 mil thick so I'm going to go down 10 mil Go. I'll do that on both sides. Might want to get down lower so that you can see the depth that you're sawing at. Also helps you to keep things level. 